Hey cucumbers, I finally got the last part that I needed for the second holographic microscope, so I can show the completed microscope and do some comparisons with the first one. I'll go over my experience with the build process and some of the issues and solutions I encountered along the way. As you can see, in comparison to the V1 holographic microscope, the V2 has a lot more complexity and parts. The V1 microscope has three 3D printed parts, two electronic components, and one pinhole piece. For the V2 microscope, there are 14 unique 3D printed parts. Some of those parts have multiple copies, so in the end there are 22 3D printed parts. There are five parts that make up the laser and camera portion of the microscope, and then there are two different nuts and four different bolt sizes used in the assembly. That brings me to the first issue I encountered with the assembly of the microscope. The bolt sizes listed in the instructions were not correct for some of the parts. The M3 bolts wouldn't fit the camera mounting holes and the 40mm M4 bolts weren't long enough for the camera and laser manipulators. In the end, I actually designed my own custom 3D printed bolts with the correct dimensions. For the camera mounting bolts, that worked out to an M2.4, and for the manipulators, that was a 45mm M4 bolt. I think if the group that produced this design does an update, we should include these 3D printed bolts, since it would simplify things to have as much 3D printed as possible and not have to source extra components. Plus, since the bolts aren't subjected to a lot of force or movement most of the time, I don't think they really need the extra durability of metal. Even if they do wear out, you can just print some new ones. 3D printing the nuts and bolts also solved another issue I was having during the microscope assembly process. Some parts didn't seem to have the right tolerances and wouldn't fit as intended depending on the orientation I printed them in. I could fix that to some degree by orienting the models differently when printing them, but that often required awkward supports that were difficult to remove. The worst was the prints that needed the embedded nuts to produce the screw action. Once I switched to the 3D printed nuts, I could customize the height so that they fit every time. Other than that, the assembly process was fairly straightforward. The documentation on GitHub is pretty good, with images and videos to show where things should go. One thing that I think they didn't mention is that you'll need to glue certain nuts in place for the manipulators to work. The other nice thing was that the original creators responded quickly to questions when I contacted them and gave helpful advice on the assembly. I'm still learning the process for the holographic image processing, so I don't have good images to show from the V1 or V2 microscopes for comparison. The V2 microscope also has adjustable heights for both the laser and camera, which adds additional complexity to determining the parameters to input into the reconstruction software. I did learn how to use the interactive 3D surface plot plugin to get a 3D rendering from the 2D reconstructed image, so I should have some really interesting images once I get all the settings correct, but that will be for another video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any new project updates.